and Lipton Silk present Inner Sanctum Mysteries. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. This is your host to welcome you in through the squeaking door to another half hour of horror. Come in, Roger. Sit down. I hope you'll forgive me if I don't get up, but I'm terribly tired. I spent last night with a friend who's a book collector, specializes in bestsellers. He certainly showed me some interesting ones. In fact, he tried to bury me in one. Because all the very best sellers have corpses in them. <laughs> Why, that's downright silly. Most sellers do not have bodies in them. But of course they have, Mary. You know the old saying, even the walls have ears. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly don't make a house sound homey at all. Why don't you talk about the kitchen with its good, warm smells of homemade food? Yes, and while you're at it, you should mention Lipton tea, because Lipton's makes good food taste better. If you're willing to gamble with your peace of mind, put out the lights and listen to Death by Scripture. It's an original radio play by that old grave digger, Robert Newman. Yes, and our star tonight is Stefan Schnabel, who plays the role of Stefan. The place is China. Somewhere near the outskirts of Shanghai, a man-made wasteland ravaged and devastated by war. Driving through an abandoned village on his way to a camp for displaced persons is Major Roger Mason. Suddenly, the glare of his headlights picks out a strange, wild-eyed figure who stares and scuttles into the shelter of an alley. Mason hesitates for only a moment, then stops his feet. Hello there. Come back here for a minute, will you? Hello. Okay, if you want to make a game out of it. There's a alley somewhere. Huh. Oh, there you are. Please. Please, Master, please. I mean no harm. Easy, I... easy. Now, no one's going to hurt you. Certainly not me. I'm an American on my way to Camp 14. Camp 14? The camp for refugees. The place person. I know. I was there. I thought so. How was it they let you leave? They did not let me. I... I ran away. Oh? Why? Because to stay would have meant death. Seems to me it would be a lot more dangerous to wandering around here. Suppose well, I take you back there with me. No. No, no, please. But I tell you, there's nothing to be afraid of. Huh? You think not? <laughs> Very well. What can man do against fate? I tried. You're a witness that I tried. But I warn you, if I go back... It will mean death, not just for me, but for others. Many others. Come in. What's going on? Yes. I'm Major Mason. I... Major Mason. I'm very happy to meet you. Welcome to Camp 14. I'm very glad to meet you, too. I've heard a great deal about you. The job you've been doing here. Oh, Dad. There was not much I could do when we were all prisoners. But now that we have been freed and are beginning to get food and medical supplies, it is almost like a holiday. May I present Miss Mia Singh, who has been assisting me? Major Mason? Miss Singh? I brought someone here with me, someone I picked up on the road, and stay fun. I did not want to come back. He made me. Was any dog come from the camp here? Yes, of course. A curious case. We have never been able to discover his last name or even his nationality. We have many kinds here, you know. White Russians, Koreans, Siamese, Burmese. Stefan, why did you do it? Why did you run away? Because I, I was afraid. Because of this. Another one. That same paper. What is it? We found about a dozen of them scattered around the camp this afternoon. But read it. You have not escaped. There is no escape. Do you recognize this symbol here? Japanese back dragon society. It says there is no escape. And it's true. I tried to escape and what happened? He brought me back. Our benefactor. Our savior. I told you there was nothing to be afraid of, Stefan. Afraid? 
Is death something to be feared? It is the one escape they cannot take from us. Death to sleep, to rest, mm. to rest. They're in a pretty bad state. Couldn't you put them up in the administration building? Mm. That might be exactly what they want. Well, what do you mean? It is not like the Black Dragon Society to warn someone they mean to kill. But suppose they don't know exactly who they do want. Wouldn't they do what they seem to have done? Make a general threat? And see who showed fear? Who did run away? The war is over, Connor. The nature is right, Doctor. Are we still living in the past? And we do have a room here where we can put Stefan. The one down the hall. Very well. But remember, I warned you. I, too, think it will mean death. <laughs> Stefan. Stefan. The door is not locked, Major. Come in. I didn't know whether I'd be disturbing you. Whether you were asleep. Sleep? I never sleep. Never. You're feeling better, though, aren't you? Stefan. It is at least quiet. A man can think. I was lying here... Trying to remember. Trying to remember what? If I knew, I would know everything. But I don't know. There is much that I can remember. Such as what? The first one. The greatest one. Many lifetimes ago. The garden with a wall around it. The torchlight bright on their breastplates and helmets. And his face. Then the hill... The place of skulls. The earth shaking. Stop it, Stefan. Whatever it is you're talking about, it. Horrible. Horrible, yes. But true. Those I can remember. I can't ever forget. But what I can't remember is now. Who I am. What I must do. And why. It will be horrible, too. As bad as the others. But, but Stephen, I... you're a sick man. Now you've got to rest. You've got to stop thinking, brooding. I'm going to get you something, some medicine. That'll help you to sleep. Then when you're strong again, we'll take you away from here. Sleep. I told you I don't sleep. I cannot sleep. No? We'll see about that. I'll be back in a few minutes. Sleep. He does not believe that it is not for me. Not even the final one, which is dreamless. What right? Outside the door. Big door. But who... Who is that? Who is there? No! No, no, no! Dr. Lester. Dr. Lester. Did you hear... Yes. Down at the end of the hall there. Stefan's room. Come on, quick. Major Mason, near. This way, down here. It sounded like shots, as if... What? Look. Jesus. No, don't touch him. Let me see. Dead. Unless he's not flesh and blood. Three slugs right over the heart. That's been fired right from the door there, and... What? What door? What is it? His pulse. Still there. Where's your searcher? I'd make to the office. What well, there is of it. Here, help me carry him in there. We'll operate immediately. Swab. The crack door right there. Yeah. That's it. You must have. Cut that off. You don't have another one, Major. Suit you then. Tired. How's this pulse? Weak. But steady. Not a swamp. That's it. Mm. Oh, I don't dare probe. What's it? It, huh? it is almost in the Vena Cava. No worse than the others. Absolutely impossible. No one will believe it. But he's still alive. There. The last one. If it does pull through. He even holds out for a couple of hours. I don't believe anything. How is he, dear? 
I don't believe it either. But he's better. His pulse is still strong and there are no signs of shock. I'll stay with him for a while. You will get some sleep. No, I, I'm all right. I'd like to stay until we are sure that... Uh, uh, no, Johnny. Uh, he's coming to us. No. Don't let you come back. Don't let you do it again. Don't. Oh, I see. What? Oh, yes. The American. Why are you looking at me like that? Because you have no right to be alive now. And you wouldn't be. If it were not for him. I never have any right to be alive. But I am. I won't die. I told you I wouldn't. I couldn't. Until I do what I have to do. And what's that? He's coming to me. Slowly. I'm beginning to remember. I do not see it all yet. But I know what it will mean. Vultures and blood, coffins and death. Well, now we're starting to get somewhere. But I wish our friend with a bad memory would stop talking about what he has to do and do it. Here we are halfway through our story with only one shooting and no corpses things don't pick up, I'm going to get in there myself and show them how to pour gore. My goodness, aren't you ever satisfied? I've had the creeps ever since this story started. I just refuse to think about what's going to happen next. Well, as the doctor said, as he sold himself up, shoot yourself. <laughs> what an awful part. Brr. Why, Mary, did you say brrrish? <laughs> I did not say brisk, and I'll thank you not to make fun of that word. Because it's a mighty important word in the language of tea experts. Yes, brisk. B-R-I-S-K is the word they use to describe the flavor of Lipton tea. It is the next evening, about ten o'clock at night. The dust-laden wind still wails around the lonely camp. And the refugees from many nations sit huddled in their rooms. Stefan, his face gaunt and drawn, is sitting propped up in bed in the administration building. I'm sure you feel well enough to talk, Stefan. There is pain, but that does not matter. What is it you wish to know, Major? You were shot, Stefan. You know that. Did you see who it was that shot you? Yes, that's all. But that is not important. It does not matter. What do you mean, it does not matter? Just that, Doctor. You see, much has come back to me. Not who I am, but... What I must do. And I know now that I have nothing more to fear. That I was shot by a mistake. Mistake? What the doctor said last night about the Black Dragon Society was quite true. There are two men here in the camp for whom the Japanese have been searching for years. Men who have been leading the resistance movement in their own countries. Even now, the Black Dragon Society feels that those two men must die. Do you know who they are? Yes. Do not mention their names. Do not even see them. You know who they are, don't you, Mia? One of them is your own father, Ram Singh, and the other is Pao Tung. Is that true? Yes. It is true. Then I think we ought to go see them at once. Make provisions to get them away from here. That, then, is the situation, gentlemen. And I should like to have you escorted to Shanghai as soon as possible. You are very kind, Major. We felt that our best protection be in anonymity. We may have been wrong. As for the danger, even though Japan has been beaten... Not all the members of the Black Dragon, nor their agents, have been rounded up. So... Nonsense, Ram Singh. You always were too cautious. The Major is right. We should have declared ourselves, returned to our countries at once. I, for one, will be happy to do so now. Good. 
There are a few things in my room I would like to get first. It will not take but a moment. I will meet you back here. Fine. You still look worried, Father. Do I? Perhaps I am. After all these years, waiting, working, suffering, to be so close to what I waited and worked for. But what is there to be afraid of? The Major has promised you protection. I know, and I'm profoundly grateful. But I keep wondering how stiff on you. Oh! Was that? Out on the compound. And the sound is like Paul Toon. Stay here, both. No, wait, I'm coming with you. Father, you stay here. Lock this door and do not let in anyone unless you know who it is. Major Mason. Major Mason, where are you? Over here. Last of dust is so thick. Who's that? Gone lock. You heard it, too? Yes. Sounds as if it came from. There he is. Paul Toon. Yes. Dead. Sorry. Cut from ear to ear. No. No, he, he just left us. He was only gone in a minute. That minute was all somebody needed. Who is this? Dr. Kornov, Ramsey. Major Mason asked me to take you up to the administration building. Oh, uh, just a second. Get. That scream out in the compound, uh, was it? Yes. Wow, Tom. And, uh, and was he? Yes. Killed. That is why the Major wanted me to come and get you. To put you somewhere where you would be safe. You are ready? Yes. For Wow, Tom, to have lived through so much, waited for so long, then... Is it known who did it? No, not yet. But they are closing the gates. Whoever it was, we'll find it difficult to get away. Will we? I wonder. In this dark, where the dust so thick you can hardly see. Besides, suppose it is not someone from outside. Suppose it is someone from the camp here. Someone who has been here for a long time. We are... Dr. Kona! Dr. Kornoff, where are you? Dr. Kornoff! Must have lost him as we came through the alley. Did he swim? Dr. Kornoff! Is that you? Who is this? Answer me! Give me who it is! No, no, no! Will you, Mia? Of course, Major. Where are you going to put him? Yeah. Right here, in the office. You told the guards at the gate? They are closed now. No one will get out. But. Stefan, what are you doing up? You should not be out of bed. I, I heard something outside. A cry, and I had to see. Which one is it? Fartoum. Dead? Yes. And the other. Your father, Mia. Dr. Kronoff wants to get him. He's bringing him here where he will be safe. Now go back inside to bed. Father? Dr. Kronoff? Kronoff. Where is your father? Isn't he here? Oh. Why, no. You were going Didn't to... Didn't you go get him? Yes, yes, I did. We started across the compound together, but it was so dark. The dust was so thick. I lost him. I called to him, looked for him, and... When there was no answer, I thought he had gone on ahead. But stay here, all of you. I'll go. I... I'm sorry, me. Why? Why are you looking at me that way? And what are you sorry about? I am sorry that we became separated, that I lost him. I am sorry that he's dead. Dead? How can you say that? Because he must be dead. Because it's part of the pattern, the cycle. That's that... enough, Stefan. Come on. I will take you back inside. You're a very sick man. Yes, you should. Yes, I'm sick. Not as sick as some, but sick enough. I won't go back, though. Not yet. I must wait. 
I'm not sure for what, but I know I must wait for something. Major Mason? Yes. You found him? Yes. Yes, I found him. Father. Father. I told you. I knew. He had to be dead. Yes. Yes, he had to be dead. I think I knew it, too. Knew it was hopeless from the very beginning. How... How did it happen? Strangled. Strangled. Dying out there in the dark. Two of them killed within a few short minutes, and, and we still do not know... That's not completely true, Mia. You mean... You know... Your father and Pao Tung were around here for a long time. They died because Stefan revealed their identity. That means the murderer had to have access to that information. He had to know precisely where they were and when they were going to be alone. And he had to be able to get at the medical supplies here. The medical supplies? Because Pao Tung's throat was cut with a scalpel. And your father was strangled with a cat cut suture. And that means... I Don't move, Connor. You've covered since I came in. Dr. Kornoff. No, I, I do not believe it. Thank you, my dear. I am sure that there will be quite a few others who will feel that same way. Seven, you saw who shot you? Who was it? He. Kornoff. You too, eh, Stefan? Well, I have a little something here I'd like to show all of you. Something... Major, that... look out! Oh! Oh! Quite fast enough, Kornoff. At least you saved us the trouble of a trial. As for you, Stefan. Do not blame him, Major. It was not his fault. Not his fault? It was he who exposed your father in Pao Tong. I know. But I think I also know why he did it. You know? Then tell me in heaven's name. Yeah. This should not come from me, but... Take it. Money? You are giving me money? Yes. Silver. The amount may not be exactly right, but... Now, do you understand? Yes. Yes. Thank you. And bless you. I do understand everything. What I have done... What does he understand? Why did you give him that money? There was once someone else who betrayed a friend and was paid for it with silver. Thirty pieces, to be exact. You mean? Yes. In the Bible. One Judas Iscariot. That's mad, insane. Are you implying that he... That that's why he didn't die when he was shot? Is he eternally mortal? I do not know. Perhaps he is not always the same. Perhaps in each crisis, in every period of history, there is always one who must play the role of the betrayer, even against his will. But this much I do know. That he is not immortal. Wait a minute. Remember... Story of Judas in the Bible. Come on, quick. What's that? The money I gave him on the floor. And. Good heavens. Yes. Matthew 27, as I recall. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed. And went. And hang himself. Well, that's the kind of character we like to have on this program. A little slow getting started, but he did deliver in the end. Ah, two corpses, plus his own. A nice down to earth sort of chap who. Uh, wound up high in the air with a rope round his neck. Yes, we'll have to see that he's back with us again next week. Rope and all. 
Hmm? Use the rope? Of course we will. You know our motto, no noose is bad news. Well, that's not my motto, Mr. Host. Is that so, Mary? Now, don't give me any of your lip tongues. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly won't give you any of my lip tongues. If you want... <laughs> And now here's a word of advice, friends. If you should be invited to spend the weekend with a friend in the country, and he should wake you at midnight carrying a lantern and a shovel and invite you to go burying with him, make sure he doesn't mean burying with a you. And when I say you, I do mean you. <laughs> oh, by the way, this month's Sinner's Thanks to Mystery Novel is The Whistling Legs by Roman McDougall. Yes, the next week's Sinner's Thanks story, directed by Hyman Brown and brought to you by Lipton Tea and Lipton Soup. Next week's story is about a honeymoon couple. Yeah, funny kind of characters to be on this program, eh? Is that what you were thinking? Well... This couple finds a corpse right in the middle of their bed. And they can't ask the corpse to leave, not to its face anyway, because, you see, it has no face. <laughs> uh, now it's time to close the squeaking door. Good night. Pleasant dreams. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 